Well, of late, they had a uh, tough game against Philly, but other than that, they've played extremely well in the last two weeks. Igor Larianov just won himself another face-off. It slides to Russell just inside the Calgary blue line as the fourth game of the six-game NHL Soviet Series is underway from the Stampede Terrell. Spenard for McDonald inside the blue line. Kutov broke that up. Flames get possession again. Rise to a left wing. That's a long shot go. Mushkin gloves that. They'll stop the play 24 seconds into the game. And what Mushkin did right there, Don, it's a little dangerous. Uh, he starts reaching all the time for low shots on, on the leg side that's away from his stick. And off times, you know, you can misplay it or you can give a rebound. That's a little dangerous for him to do that. Riceboro won the faceoff that time. McDonald has it on the boards in behind the net now, trying to make a play out in front. They get it back over on the other side. There's no one there, but Larianov of the Soviet Union. Flames for checking well now, but the Soviets break so quickly as they so often do. Timonev chasing it down against Russell in the corner. Goaltender Edwards out of there to help. Comes up the boards to Lanny McDonald. Bernard for Rise for a rise for closing in backhand shot rebound picked up by Betty Saab. The Soviet captain Vyacheslav Betty Saab comes across the blue line. Two ball back inside, onside. Quick shot is handled by Edwards from the stick of Loriana. Wayne, when you were going to play against uh, the Russians the other night, you knew Mushkin was going to start. Did you people have any different feeling uh, having him in the net versus Trecia? Well, I think that we have such a young hockey team that uh, we're in kind of an awe playing against Trechiak. I think we all saw the series in 72, and like I said, being a younger hockey team, uh, it probably had a psychological effect to us that when we saw that he was starting, might have got us a little bit more excited. Did you expect to shoot more because he was in the net? Well, I think that against the Soviet hockey team that, that you have so much pro so many problems getting a second shot uh, after original shot from the point that we wanted to, to take as many shots as possible and be on top of the goalie at all times. Kent Nielsen now skates to the faceoff against Sergei Shepilev. Nielsen winning it. Soviets have possession in there. Shalimov turning the wheel. Couldn't get a shot away. Lavalley got his stick on it and leaves it for Nielsen. Rink wide over to Paul Reinhardt. Reinhardt lead pass to the valley is right on the goaltender Mushkin high off the glass for Nielsen Nielsen going down there no penalty called on the play they bump to hold it in the Soviets come up with it Bozakov to his own blue line and now the defenseman Sergei Babinov moves one deflected wide by Steve Conroy in the Calgary corner in the early minutes the valley Hartley passed across the ice. Babinoff intercepts, forced outside the line by Conroy. Here is the dangerous Kapustin for Shepilev. Couldn't get the pass to it. Shalimov carries on in behind. Pierre Ryu comes on to help out for Calgary. And Ryu, just recalled from the minor leagues, feeds it at center ice. Babinoff left it there. Lavalle could not get around the Soviet player. And Bozlikov comes back with Shalimo. Shalimo to an open wing. Jamie Hislop for Calgary. He passed blindly to a Soviet player. Starikov. Vasiliev leads it inside the line for Baikov. He was bumped there by Heinmarsh. Comes right in front, and Edwards has to pounce on it. They stop the play. About two and a half minutes into period one, the NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. From Calgary, a scoreless first period. Don Chevrier with Lou Nanny and Wayne Gretzky with you for the fourth game of this series. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you are across Canada. The Flames again, as they have done so often, smartly move it out of their own zone. Starikov left it there. Richmond's long rolling shot for Heinmarsh. He couldn't find it. In behind, they dump it out in front for Heinmarsh. And Baikov shoots it down the ice wide. The Soviets clearing it are going to be called for icing as Dunn is back to collect it for Calgary. Well, Calgary got a couple of good shots early, and that's what they have to do is just keep pressing the Soviets, trying to get some shots. If they could get a goal on Michigan, they might have set the whole team. As Wayne was saying earlier, you play a little differently depending on the goaltender, and sometimes when you don't have as much confidence, you start to try things that normally you wouldn't do, and that could upset the Soviets' game plan. Much had been made before Calgary of the size of this rink being small, but Lunani checked it. Only a foot shorter than the regulation 200, perhaps less than a foot. So it shouldn't be a factor. Of course, 
The ice surface here not nearly as wide as the Soviets have it back at home, and that will affect their game, if anything will. Semenov takes it across the blue line, dumps the pass in there. They try to center it out from number 26, Sportsov. Flames doing an effective job in their own zone. Edwards with it now will feed it around the boards for Jackson. Jackson dumps it for Russell in behind. Now it is number 15, Svetlov taking it down the boards, and he in turn is taken down as they bump for it there in the Calgary corner. But Plinsky goes in now against Svetlov, the Soviet player losing his balance. And Poplinski finally helps him clearing it down the ice. We approach the four-minute mark. There is no score for Vukin. Or Svetlov. Sports off to Svetlov inside the blue line. Lanny McDonald feeds it across the ice to Paul Reinhardt. Conroy got turned around. Play very scrambly at this stage. No team getting a decided edge here. The Soviets being met at the blue line by Calgary and turned back. This is Krutov backpedaling as the Soviet national team likes to do. Vilya Lepinov stationed now behind his own goal forms the play up the left side. Hops over a stick. Good for checking by Rice for pressing the Soviets back in. Berbukin gets it across to Krutov. Now Larionov's long pass. Drifts all the way down beside Edwards net. The Flames more than holding their own with the Soviets here in the early going. Have not had many great scoring chances, though. The puck has been inside the Calgary blue line the majority of the time. But now here come the Calgary Flames. Lanny McDonald streaks down the right side. Tries to dump it in front. Is thwarted there by Kazutana. McDonald with a world of experience against the Soviets behind him. Headed out for Reisbruck, bumped off the puck by Kasatana. With Timyanev, drops the puck there. Timyanev shot, out comes Edwards for a sparkling save, the best save so far. Benisov winding, blocked there. There's going to be a penalty called by referee Brian Lewis. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Dougie Reisbrook coming back to help out. Gets a penalty right in front of the net. You see him take the Soviet player there off down. He'll be going off for tripping. Soviets on a first power play of the evening. Calgary, a man short of the 528 mark. The Soviets good at only two of 17 power plays in this series against National Hockey League team. Shalimov now. The right face-off circle digs it across the ice. Here is Vazikov. Back to Shalimov. Down behind the net they go, jamming it out in front, comes all the way over on the far side for Babinov, and a weak shot from Vazikov. Slam down the ice for the Calgary Flames. A minute 30 left in Riseborough's penalty for Calgary. Kapustin stopping inside the line, trying to feed Shalimov, but stick check there, and it is fired down the ice by Kent Nielsen. There was face the Soviets, 15 to 20 times, he estimates, and is still frustrated by them, as so many pros and other European players are. Shalimo across the ice, in behind Kapustin, who gets his stick on it once again for the Soviet Union, then smartly checked, and is dug out by Kapinski. The Flames now are halfway through, very effectively killing off the Soviet power play. We say it is the one thing the Soviets have not done exceptionally well. That is, execute the power play on this tour. Betisov moves one wide. Russell, the big defenseman, up the boards with it. Fails to clear. Now Russell comes in, tackles the Soviet player. They go down on a foul. No penalty call. The face-off with 32 seconds left of the penalty. Wayne? The one thing that I think the Soviets said that they're going to do coming over and playing this series is uh, go back and correct the things that they think they can correct to help their hockey game. And if you notice the one thing they're doing a lot different this time over than past years is they're not taking their time on the power plays. They're taking a lot of shots. Therefore, I think that they're getting very frustrated and may change that. It is dug back to Kazatanov across to Fedosov. Down to the left faceoff circle it goes. Back to the point man. Fedosov, Kazatanov, he fakes the shot, slides it across the ice to Krutov. 
Reinhardt for Calgary to Hislop. Two Soviet players pounce on him. That's one thing to do very well. They seem to be everywhere the puck is. But Calgary clears it down the ice. Eight seconds left now in Riseborough's penalty for tripping. No score in the game. Soviets heading back up the ice again. Marianov gets it down inside the blue line. Back on the ice. Riseborough. Calgary is close quick. Riseborough passing it out. Schwenard for Riseborough. McDonald, McDonald for Schwartz, he can't get his stick on it. And now here comes Krutov, one on two. Calgary defenders back quickly. Krutov gets it across. Orianov could not collect the pass. And for the Calgary Flames, Bourgeois beating on the right side. McDonald just missed him. Here's Krutov. Skates smartly around Dunn and got bumped off the puck. Baikov is the Soviets back pedal once again. Petasov's had a long shift this time. Baikov brings it inside the blue line. Now Petasov goes to the bench. Semenov back on the left point to Gamaya. Starikov. Weisbrook checks him. They hold it there. Doug Preeb of the Soviet player. Dress him off. Puck almost given away to Vasilyev. Then hit out the center ice where Baikov has it. Soviets have had the edge territorially, but have not been overpowering inside the Calgary blue line. Gerasimov bumped there, and it forced them to go back and regather. Calgary just lining up at the line there, Don, trying to keep him from getting inside the zone. Like the Great Wall of China. They just stand there and bump them as they come in. It's been fairly effective so far. The puck down the Calgary corner as they push and shove for it. Makasak trying to dig it free. Works it up the boards. Held in by Skarikov. Quick shot. Gamayev's glass goes high off the glass over top of the Calgary goal. Sports off. Let's one go. Edwards comes out. Baikov digging after it. The sports off. Tip back to Skarikov. He shot wide. Indeed, the Soviets are shooting much more frequently than we've seen in previous years. A quick shot by Svetlov is turned aside by Edwards, who's busy right now. They're at full strength. You think the Soviets had a power play. It is golf down the ice. There's a second penalty of the game called by referee Brian Lewis. It'll be going to Bridgman of the Calgary Flames. They'll be shorthanded again. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. As we look at Bridgman getting an elbowing penalty, we talked to Tikhanov yesterday about the Soviet idea on the power play. They definitely are playing two men down by the net. What they try and do is tie up both defensemen, have their sticks on the inside to tip any shot aimed towards the net. At the same time, open an alley, hopefully to get some of the defensemen or the center coming right up the middle for a good shot. So Bridgman off for elbow and the kind of penalty that Calgary cannot afford to take. Unnecessary. Quebec Nordique's guilty of that in game two. Shalomo for the Soviet Union. Very patiently now as they try to slow the pace of this power play. Which now is only two for 18. They missed earlier tonight. Verbukin plays it down, gets it back. Vilya Lefthadov's shot is blocked by the Calgary defense. Still a minute and a half left in Richmond penalty, but it does come back down the ice. Nine minutes and 30 seconds to play in this a scorer's first period so far. Sergei Kapustin digs it over on the far side to Shepelev on the left wing. And back to Pervukin. Lydia Lefthadov could not pop it. It popped outside the blue line. It's offside there. 109 left in Bridgman's penalty. What the Calgary Flames have to realize is no matter what happens during the hockey game, they have to be very patient. They can't take any unnecessary penalties. Sooner or later, the Soviets are going to start scoring goals. They can't be held off that long. They have to be patient and make sure they play good sound hockey. Right. This NHL Soviet Series 83 is protected by copyright and is played under authority of the National Hockey League and the NHL Players Association. A little over a minute left in Bridgman's sentence for the Calgary Flames. An elbowing penalty. As a Tomov reaches the Flames blue line. Fedesov winding. That shot was blocked by Heinmarsh. As a Tomov, Fedesov loves to boom them from the point. That also blocked by Calgary and shot down the ice. I 
don't know about shots on goal, but in the direction of the goal, the Soviets have an overwhelming edge. Timonev. Lays it down for Kutov. Kutov had a man right in front of the goal. Couldn't get the puck to him. Mariana. Again, Calgary clear. Officially 4-2. The Soviets leading in shots directly on goal. 15 seconds now, and the Bridgman penalty remains. Reinhardt. Taps it off the boards. Again, the Flames looking as though they've been successful in killing this power play off. Timonev stalled, but Kutov carries on. Bridgman out of the box now to full strength. Kutov being contained along the boards. Larionov gets it across the left side. Gamayev and the hard shot goes wide by Kutov. Fedosov blasts it away. Out to the valley. The valley ahead at center ice. Back to the valley. Down the left board she goes. In front of the goalie is a man open. Can't get the pass out to him. Reinhardt keeping it in for Calgary. Around for Nilsson and out across the goal mouth it comes and all the way down the ice. Dunn wins the race against Timonev. Seven minutes, 35 seconds to play. Reinhardt goes down. No penalty call. Vasiliev shot good side. Good save by Edwards to flex it up into the crowd. NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. No score, and that's the time remaining here in the first period as we await the face-off to Edwards left. Ikon will take the draw for the Soviets against Jim Toplinski for Calgary. Toplinski wins it, left there for Dunn. Up the boards, relayed by Jackson out to center ice. Starikov has to hurry to get a pass off to Baikov. Drop for Vasilya, he shot from just across the center red line. Bourgeois around the boards for Jackson. Jim Jackson skating out with it. Mokosak takes the pass. Beats Poplinski, shoots! Wide on the short side with Pushka going the other way. Yes, it's left by Cox. Drills it down to the left Calgary corner. Edwards around the boards. Poplinski chops at him, can't clear. Semenov falling into the board. Checked there by Richie Dunn. Now a penalty has been called as Semenov and Dunn mixed it up along the sideboard. 6.28 left. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Well, you're enjoying it now and a chance for the Calgary Flames, Lumanti, to have a power play as Gerasimov is off for holding. Gerasimov was holding Richie Dunn after Dunn had taken him down along the boards. Wouldn't let him back into the play. And the Flames have had one of the more productive power plays in the National Hockey League of late. Soviets are just two for 19 now in the series. Scoreless first period, 6.15 to go in it. Nilsson could not take it inside the Soviet blue line. Edwards leaving it for Bridgman. Now Reinhardt coming out with it for Calgary. Blasts it down to the corner. Flames pouring in after it. It's called icing against Calgary. That shot came from the Flames half of center ice. Lanny McDonald, of course. The leading goal scorer in the National League with 35 goals. A very dangerous man anytime he's in shooting area. Great wrist shot. One thing you can look for, Wayne, you probably noticed it the other night. The Soviets have a different idea of killing penalties. They're very aggressive with three men. The fourth man floats for a break when you guys burn them the other night. Well, we, uh, when we were winning 3 2 and they took the penalty late in the game, I had mentioned to Paul Coffey to be careful that Kapusa would probably be trying to score a goal to tie the game up. He went out outside his own zone and we were fortunate enough to score a goal. Bernard for the Calgary Flames. We still have 1.18 to go in the Soviet penalty. Gerasimov for holding. Reinhardt takes the pass inside the blue line. McDonald cruising in there. Stenard, Reinhardt got turned around. Now they get it back on the point. Stenard, Stenard again. They're playing catch out there. Now Reinhardt. He gets set. Can't get the shot away. Svetlov came out to meet him. Now Reinhardt lost one. Deflected wide. Richmond. For McDonald. McDonald out to Reinhardt. Reinhardt being 
Harris for Nielsen too far. Bridgman in behind again. McDonald. Reinhardt. Lanny McDonald. Well, Bridgman. Lane taking all kinds of time. 27 seconds to go on the penalty. McDonald shoots. How about this? goal Nielsen gets off Lanny McDonald's rebound after a set up by Reinhardt. What a blast by Lanny McDonald, Don, wasn't that? Look at this. He lets it go, a rocket up in the shoulder. Nielsen on the doorstep, going to put it in the open net. All caused because of that rocket by McDonald after a nice feed right there by Reinhardt. Look at Nielsen moving on the right side. He's got a free net. Michigan down and out, Wayne. He's probably wondering where that shot came from. Well, Andy McDonald's having a tremendous year this season. Anytime on the power play when they're in the Soviet zone, it looks for the Calgary Flames to be feeding him at all times. Exactly what happened, and Nielsen was there for the rebound. So a power play goal gives Calgary the first blood in tonight's game. Long shot down to Edwards. It was Nielsen from Reinhardt and McDonald, 15-10. Calgary won, the Soviets nothing. Look out, there's a chance right on Edwards' doorstep. Flames come back again. Poplinski, two on one, he shoots. Rebound, still loose in there. Picked up by Starikov. Flames with new life after that power play goal. And Michigan certainly felt the force of that first blast from McDonald. Nilsson then finding a wide open net with the Soviet goalie down. First time in three games, NHL teams have scored on them. McDonald leading it at the blue line. Backhands it in, it is on side. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Wayne Gretzky. Crew top line is a very important factor for this hockey club. And we played our defensive line against them, Davey Hunter and Pat Hughes and Kenny Lindsman. Uh, we see something a little bit different, Lane McDonald going right off against Krutov, so it should be very interesting what happens. If you look for Omens, the Soviets have won both times. They got the first, which turned out to be the only goal. Now Calvary has scored first here, as Edmonton did, and almost got a second one right there. 3.40 to play in the first period. Icing call against the Soviet Union. Lanny McDonald with a great on the doorstep. A fine shot. A great save by Michigan. Mushkin probably wondering he's seen too much McDonald already. Lanny with that big mustache. Great shot. He's very, very dangerous. Once he hits that blue line, he doesn't slap that puck. He's just got that short wrist shot. Watch him just move to the net. Goal scorers always move to the net. Goal scorers always put the puck on the net. Ooh, That's right what there. he does right there. Yep. McDonald, an Alberta native, played his junior hockey with Medicine Hat. Now back here in the NHL with the Calgary Flames. Soviets ice it again. Dunn collects it. We have 3.25 left now. The Soviets showing signs of feeling some pressure. That's the first time we've seen the Soviets ice the puck twice within a five-minute span, let alone within 20 seconds. <laughs> right. Wayne, did you people feel that uh, you were going to stifle the Soviets in their own zone, causing them to make long passes, maybe get into ice the puck? Well, we knew that Fedosov was a big key to their hockey club, and he does play very well. We wanted to keep the puck away from their defensemen, moving it to the wingers. We wanted to have the puck as much as possible in their zone, and I think that helped us out. Here's Nielsen feeding Reinhardt. He shot it wide. Still loose down there. Garasimov for the Soviet Union digs it out, takes it inside the line. He lets a shot go. Edward lost it for a moment. Deflected it over top. Lane smartly again coming out. Rio. Nilsson, and it's offside at the Soviet blue line. One nothing Calgary. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Viktor Tikhonov, who on this tour has developed a sense of humor of a Johnny Carson compared to former Soviet coaches, Lou. <laughs> he must be enjoying the hospitality. I think he's having a fine time. Here's Nielsen now getting a break across the Soviet blue line. Fed it too far, back between the point man. And Conroy has to go back to beat Reinhardt in the flame zone. 2.45 remaining in the first period. But Calgary has drawn first blood. Rio chasing it down the Soviet zone. Garasimov. Rick wide. Starikov. Baikov to Starikov again. Wide angle shot. Blocked easily by Edwards, who has done pretty well against Soviet teams. 
He has beaten them six to one and seven to three in two previous outings. Seven three in the Canada Cup round robin last year. Rio to Conroy. Then for Nielsen inside the Soviet line. Being stick checked there by Gamayev. They bump against the boards. Lavalli jams it in over on the near side. The Soviets finally come up with it. Rick White pass for Krutov. Krutov back into the center again. Couldn't find a man. Now a long lead pass for Bridgman goes too far. Vasiliev with a minute 43 remaining. Soviets going back into somewhat of a shell now. Calgary with a good second half of this first period has produced a goal. Einmar shoots it in. Will you let it off in behind his own goal? Out to center ice they come. Sheffield. Calgary again. Richmond's long shot. Off the boards it comes. The stick of Perbukin. Then to Sportsov. They go the other way. A little disorganized right now. Kept in by Hislop. In behind the net. Hislop in the corner. Feeding it in front. Heinmarsh couldn't get his stick on it. Sportsov skates against Russell. Jammed against the board. Cleared it in front. Intercepted by Calgary with a minute to go on the period now. And a run time. Feeding Bridgman. Nobody out there on the far point. A penalty is the Referee Brian Lewis, it will be the fourth penalty of the night. And this one is going to go to the Soviet Union to Pervukin. They are now even in penalties of two apiece. The Soviets definitely getting frustrated in their own zone, taking penalties they don't normally take. But more than that, Calgary causing them to give up the puck, not coming out smooth at all, the Soviet team is. And Calgary having some good opportunities. We look at the penalty right in front of the net. Calgary looking extremely sharp. Wayne bottling them up, coming out of their own zone. Calgary's forechecking very well. And what, what's interesting about the Soviets is they make a tremendous transition from offense to defense and from defense to offense. And Calgary seem to pick that up and are ready for it at all times tonight. So an important power play and an extra goal here late in this period be a mighty big one if the Flames can get it. 40 seconds to go in the penalty. Unless they score, of course, it'll... Spill over until the second period. Reinhardt in behind his own goal. Now they have 30 seconds of playing time remaining. For Nielsen inside the Soviet line. McDonald forcing it back. Bernard shot hit the goal post. Pushkin did not know where it was. Kept in by Geese Bernard. Richmond digs it out of there. Picked up by the Soviets. The Pushkin. Six seconds to play in the period. Sheffield Kapusta relayed it. Tough save for Edwards, but he made it. Out they come. A long shot by McDonald. Out the fire in the end. Three and one. And a good first period it was. In particular, the second half of it by the Calgary Flames. We got a goal by Nielsen from Reinhardt and McDonald at 15 10. And the Flames lead the Soviet national team one to nothing. And what an ovation they get as they leave the ice from this partisan crowd here in Calgary's Stampede Corral. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in just a moment. Or assist going to Reinhardt. That's how it stands right now as they face off to begin the second period. Still 115 left in for Vukin's penalty. So the Calgary power play continues into this second period. Schwenard to the Soviet blue line. Gets it inside. Down goes Reinhardt. Managed to steer it in front as he fell. Kutov can't get it. Schwenard in front. Relay. Saved by Mushkin. Schwenard lets one go. He scores! Bridgman moving to the front of the net, Don. Schwenard's shot is reflected by Mushkin. A second power play goal for Calgary with that very, very potent power play of theirs, putting them into a 2 nothing league. Watch the play here. As Brisbane moves to the front, he gets a piece of it. That shot came from the point from Schwenard. Schwenard out at the right side, kept it in, and it all was made possible because Krutov was on the left boards. The defenseman tried to get it around, got it around too hard. It was kept in by Schwenard. There's a the deflection. Schwenard, unassisted, 
a power well, play Well, the goal. score rules that Trenard got it in cleanly, unassisted at 29 seconds, although it did look like Bridgman might have got a piece of it. Well, it certainly did. Either they'll change it or then it hit Mushkin's stick. But Bridgman working effectively, as Ed Westfall said before he had the first power play, right in front of the net. All because of a missed pass from the Soviet defenseman to Krutov. And there, keeping the puck in his own with Schwenard. So the Calgary Flames quickly into a 2-0 lead, our 2 for 2 on the power play against the Soviets. Now Pushkin's got a chance, and Edwards blocks that. Shepelev keeping it in to Baikov. Duck back for Babinov. Quick shot wide, just wide of the goal by Vozikov. Jackson getting it ahead to Mokosak. Mokosak back to Jackson. His shot's got by Mushkin. Flames playing with confidence now. Right on goal to go. Tremendous chance there for Carl Mokosak. Could not get his stick on it. Vozikov. Finally clears for the Soviet Union. A minute 25 into the period. Kowalski, that is glove. Steer to the corner by Mushkin. Ahead for Vasilyev. Too far and his shot the length of the ice. Richie Dunn goes back to pick it up for the Soviets to call for icing. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Bernard getting Calgary's second goal. Don Chevrier with Wayne Gretzky of the Edmonton Oilers. Lou Nanny of the Minnesota North Star. Shetlov was hurt, Don. He did, had a heavy check by Poplinski. He's hurt down there. Soviets have lost a couple of players through injury. Maltsev hurt in practice has gone home. Gojavenikov has missed two games now. Soviets inside the Calgary line. Gerasimov could not maintain control. Buffing in behind is Bourgeois. And it's free for Lanny McDonald. His pass off Bykoff, taken by Bykoff now, steps inside the line, tries to drop it back, can't do so. Bykoff, as the Soviets are all over the ice. The Spiliev taken down by McDonald. And McDonald sends Schwinnard away. Two on one, here's Wise for Schwinnard. Shot, stopped by Mushkin. Bourgeois to McDonald. Lanny McDonald trying to maintain possession. Leaves it for Riseborough. This is a very effective line for the Calgary Flames. Wyckoff brings it out for the Soviet Union now. Calgary changing on the go. Gerasimov's shot stopped by Edwards. Wyckoff's wide angle swap shot was blocked and rolls back to center ice. Starikov to Gamayo. Off the boards for Bourgeois. And he pops it up in the crowd. There'll be a stoppage of play three minutes into period two. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Viktor Tikhanov and the Soviet national team not enjoying what they've seen so far tonight. It's been all Calgary, 2-0 Flames. Three minutes into this second period. Calgary in command, Reinhardt. Or Lavalle inside the blue line it goes. For Vukic, it was off for the second Calgary goal of the power play. Feeds it ahead. Semenov digs after it. Icing called against the Soviet Union. Wayne, we're going to see a face-off now as we look at Paul Reinhardt, a fellow with a great deal of experience in international hockey. How did you find them in face-offs? They were supposed to be weak, and earlier you just saw Lenny McDonald get a good chance off the draw. How were they against you? Well, I think that, you know, we've been uh, taught a little bit differently on face-offs than they have. Uh, at no time do they ever cheat on a, on a draw at all. Uh, I think they, again, they play some mind games now and then. Uh, Face-offs in the center ice area, they don't bear down as much as uh, we probably do sometimes. But when they get in their own zone and in the offensive zone, uh, it throws you off a little bit and they bear right down. Soviets bring it out. Right in on goal on the backhand shot by Stutloff goes way up into the crowd. Well, you were right there. They bared down, won that face-off, and they broke out for a breakaway. Another fine save by that man right there, Don Edwards, who's returning after a month away. And, boys, he made some big stops. But you're right, Don Shivery. You know, he's had a great uh, track record against the Soviets, and you feel confident. You see how he stood up? He gave him nothing. 
and he got a piece of it as a, he was trying to sweat off trying to go for the upper corner. I have to wonder if the Soviets are trying to set up the Calgary Flames a little bit. They've iced the puck a few times trying to go for the high man. Uh, look to see the Soviets make the short pass and then throw it up the middle a little bit more. This is Russell for Calgary ahead to Heinmars to the center ice area. Heinmars drifts one wide. Pushkin stick has it roll up on top of the board. Quickly the Soviets are there. Russell at center ice keeps it away from Timonev. Backhanded down by Heinmarsh. The Soviet captain Fedisov to Krutov. Larionov can't get around Bridgman. Has a ton off to Timonev inside the blue line. And Aranta. Heinmarsh kept in. Shot drifts wide from Kazatana. Benesov overskates it. Hislop just fails to clear. Larianov, ever dangerous, swirling in front, drops it for Krutov. Tried to feed Larianov and gave the puck up to Bridgman. Hislop to Eloranta. Eloranta made the pass back to Russell, who keeps it in. Then his weak backhander is stopped by Benesov. Timonev. Benesov shooting, and it's wide. Rutov right back in front again. Timonev got turned around. Up with it comes Hislop. And back inside the Soviet blue line it goes as the Blades change on the move. We approach the five-minute mark of period two. It is two-nothing for Calgary over the Soviet Union. Blades endeavoring to tie the series for the NHL. Poprinsky with Jackson. Hokasak trailing. Hokasak shot goes by. Bergeron keeping it in, the right point. Hokasak dug it out in front for Jackson. He couldn't get his stick on it. Broken up by Dunn. Feeding Poplinski. Puts two Soviet defenders into the corner he goes, then gave it up to Shalimo. With Shepelev and Kapustin. Shalimo shooting, blocked by Bourgeois. High off the backboards in the Calgary corner. Poplinski jams in there now. Soviets trying to... Freeze it for a face-off. The Flames finally do to take off the heat. Five minutes and 40 seconds into period number two. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Death. Coach of the Flames, a former U.S. college coach, Bob Johnson, has done a good job preparing this team tonight, Lou. He certainly has. He's had a great deal of experience against them already. For the Flames, Conroy for Reinhardt. Reinhardt being hounded there by Vasiliev. But got it out to center ice. Mykov to Gerasimo. Open up by Schwenard, but Fedosov is there. Randy McDonald can't get to it. Vasiliev coming up with it. Darikov. Yarosimov inside the blue line offside. Bykov trapped in there. You know, Wayne was talking earlier about, as we look at Dougie Reisberg playing the wing, about the Soviets breaking out, coming up the boards. What they try and do, we had Dr. Horsky from Czechoslovakia in this year. European teams, Wayne, their first outlet pass usually goes to the boards, and that's what Bob Johnson's taken away from them tonight. Then they go up the middle, and what they are having problems doing right now is getting that puck to the wing on the boards because Calgary's been effectively taking it away from them. They're playing very smart, Calgary, taking that, that pass away, as you said. And I'm wondering if the high boards are, is bothering the Soviets a little bit right now. I don't think they've ever seen boards like this. I'm sure they're having problems jumping over them when they're changing <laughs> on the fly. <laughs> Got to be careful doing that. Reinhardt getting it up for Conroy. McDonald down it goes in behind. Mushkin, the Soviet goalie, beaten twice on power plays tonight for a 2-0 Calgary lead. That loss with it now. Hits the Flames' blue line. Splits the defense, but Edwards steers it away. Puck bounces high in among the spectators. Face off to the left of Edwards. There's about one of seven the, minutes gone of the period. There's one of their regular defensemen. Kravukin's been around for quite some time. He, along with Fedosov, and really hitting off and tapping off are the four mainstays of that defense, especially now that Vasiliev's gone. Wayne, did you find them playing differently against you and NHL teams? 
Well, I find it a little bit different, but the one thing that do, do do similar that the NHL teams do is they played Fedis off a lot against my line and against me out there, and that made it a little bit difficult. This is Svetlov against Russell being steered off to the corner. Russell with a stranglehold on him. Lewis right there, and no penalty called as Svetlov lost his helmet. Now Nielsen goes flying. Lavalle for Calgary. Left it for Russell off the side of the goal. And it's passed back between the point man all the way down to Mushkin. Timyanev. Right wing pass for Krutov. Stemming off with him. Krutov going in too far. Swings it around the other side. Loose Soviet helmet left on the ice. And it's cleared down by the Calgary Flames for Nielsen. Krutov fell all by himself. Mariana. Now Timonev gets a bruising body check from Russell. Sliding down, there'll be a penalty call to Bill Russell of the Calgary Flames. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Coming up on a three-on-two break, sees Timonev coming with the puck, and Timonev had him beat. He's going to hook him, pull him right down there. He'll get a tripping penalty. Russell can't move up on a three-on-two situation and force the man in a situation like that, because, Wayne, I bet you love to see that happening to you. <laughs> well, it's nice when a guy lunges at you, so to speak, and makes it a little bit easier. Quickly, as the Flames begin to kill off this power play, it is shot down to Mushkin's doorstep. Soviets only two for 19 on power plays in the series, but you get the feeling that low percentage can't last forever. Here's Kutov coming in now. The pass back to Kazatanov. Pettisov shooting wide. They have been wide many times with slap shots from long range. Pettisov being chased by Riseborough. Now Larianov. Larianov. Had it taken away by Highmarsh. Back down the ice it goes. A minute 19 left in the penalty to Phil Russell. Kazatanov. Beating Lariana. Drop back too far for Shadanov. Outside the line, Fedosov with it. Soviets again. Not very impressive on this power play so far. Kapustin takes the pass to the left board. For Lariana, right in front. He scores, rolling it in past Edwards, who's come out to meet him. Just off the inside of the post, it's 2 1. That's true, as a fine pass from Lariana. Larianov on the side from Kapustin. Larianov taking this pass right here. He sees Edwards moving out. Look at him. He goes to his backhand. A lot of room, even though he's being taken out. You think uh, Edwards moved a little too quick there, Wayne? Well, Donnie's got to come out and force him. As you see, two, two Calgary players went to the one side. Uh, patience on the part of the Soviet player in front of the net, not to rush himself, and just easily tapped it in. Kapustin and Kazatanov on a power play goal reduced the Calgary lead to 2-1. to one. Power play goal Well, you're right, Don. You thought that it couldn't last forever, and it sure did, and you can't give them too many opportunities. That time, just a little pass off the side, and Larianov moving in had a lot of net, but he made a real wide deep, which is tough to do. Coming up, the Soviets, the North Stars in Minnesota on Tuesday. The Soviets, the Philadelphia Flyers to wind it up the spectrum on Thursday night. You'll have both those games for you right here. Punching body check from the valley. Long shot in on the Soviet goal. Shalimov digs it across the line and has it now with center ice for Kapustin. Kapustin swings into the right faceoff circle, ridden off by Richie Dunn. Shefalev gets it out, picked up by Lavalle. There's a delayed penalty being called now. It's against the Soviet Union. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in just a moment. Well, this man, number six, Richie Dunn, has drawn two penalties, that one for interference, and earlier he had drawn one on Vasilyev for holding. He takes the man out well, he frustrates the Russian, now Kapustin in the penalty box, power plays being very prevalent here tonight in scoring. Calgary is two for two on power plays so far. Soviet goal also came in a power play situation, 2-1 flames. Renard for Nielsen, shooting it down. Back in front of Cup. Nielsen, oh, he set up to get the shot away and rolled off his stick of the Soviet golf but down the ice. Roger, 
Reinhardt in behind his own goal. A member of the Canada Cup team. Along with Edwards, Lanny McDonald, Schwenard, inside the blue line, rolls it around behind the Soviet goal. But quickly Vasiliev coming up with it, sending Bykov away at center ice. Back to Vasiliev, one-on-one. -on -one. Vasiliev passed over to Starikov, loose in front of the goal, and swept away by McDonald. Close call for the Calgary Flames with a man advantage right there. 55 seconds left in the Soviet penalty to Kapuska. Reinhardt, Richmond. Got himself trapped offside to pass off his skates. We were talking earlier that uh, National Hockey League, we have a set pattern with the defense setting at the defensive side and the forward sitting at the other zone. And a few times tonight, the Soviet players who don't use that system have had trouble coming on the ice with the small benches here. So maybe uh, one of these times, Calgary might be able to catch him on a play like that. Wayne, well, I want to remind the people the Labatt's players of the game will be awarded at the end of the contest for each team. Chosen by our telecast crew, and they'll each receive a Panasonic Way mini stereo cassette player. And a fine opportunity by the Soviets killing the penalty. And that man right there, Vasiliev, number six, ever dangerous all night long, and probably shoots the puck as anyone else on that hockey club, probably as well as anybody in the league. He's a fellow with that bullet shot. Soviets have a goal, but in the first 11 minutes almost, they have only had three shots on goal. They have shot Calgary 11-6. In the first period, 2-1 Flames. Here's Poplinski shooting it down the right side. Has a tap off to Krutov. Poplinski bumps him. Tries to gain possession. Gets it back to Eloranta. Way over there for Lavalle. Lavalle in front. Delayed penalty indicated here against the Soviets. Poplinski could not get possession. High stricky call against the Soviets. They'll be two men short for 23 seconds. And this is something Calgary really should capitalize on. They've got an excellent power play, as they've demonstrated already. And now with two-man advantage, they should have got that puck to the Soviet man right away. They played about 10 seconds while there was a delay. When you see that penalty, the goalie had to come out. You're down there. You might as well give the Soviets a puck immediately and get the extra two-man advantage. They still do have 23 seconds on it. Something different to see. The Soviets taking all the penalties instead of the Canadian teams. It's nice to see, though. It's a good change. A little refreshing. You're right. Especially after Quebec the other night. The penalty of the team captain, Petasov. The Soviets right now trying to slow things down, getting their people a little rested. They are somewhat frustrated by the strong Calgary forechecking tonight. Calgary playing a very, very good game solidly. And as you pointed out, Don, Soviets with only three shots thus far in this period. Flames holding a two-to-one lead of a two-man advantage for a few seconds here in the second period. Betisov held in by Schwenard across to Reinhardt. Here is Schwenard now, closing into Reinhardt. Reinhardt shoots wide. Great scoring chance right there. Back to Reinhardt again. Blast the slap shot. Bushkin hangs on. Five seconds left in the first Soviet penalty. Well, that's what uh, the Soviets wanted Reinhardt to do there. Reinhardt's in good scoring position at the top of the circle. But the Soviets had cleared the lane, letting Mushkin see it. Someone's got to get in front and screen Mushkin on that shot. They're making mistakes that I've never seen them make before. Kutov had the puck in front of the net, a lot of time to ice the puck, made a bad play and just shot it back to the fence with a Calgary player keeping it in, and almost an opportunity for Calgary to score another goal. It's behind the goal for Bridgman around for Schwenard. Can't get there in time. The Soviets clear. The first penalty is up now as Kapustin's back on the ice. A minute and 31 still left in the penalty to Fedosov for high sticking. Bridgman, long shot, handled easily by Mushkin. He'll play it safe and cover up. Well, the Calgary people shouldn't be complaining about that because he's allowing Calgary the opportunity to win a faceoff in his zone. This is something Calgary's been extremely dangerous with. When Riseborough or Bridgman wins a faceoff, if they get Lanny McDonald in shooting position, and right now they got Schwenard out there, those fellas can put him away. Wyckoff on the faceoff against Mel Bridgman. Back leg away forward, it goes to the Soviet player, shot down the ice by Gerasimov. Reinhardt left it there for Guy Schwenard. Now Schwenard, 105 left to the Soviet penalty to set us off. They bring it inside the line. Lanny McDonald to Reinhardt. 
Around it goes to Nielsen. Now Schwinnar. Across the ice to Bridgman. Bad pass for Schwinnar. He's got to chase it, but he gets it in front. It's 3 1 Calgary. Dee Schwinnar knew exactly where Lanny McDonald was. Even though it was a bad pass coming across the ice, he didn't even have to look. He just fired it right across to the rocket. McDonald, McDonald getting that shot away extremely quick right there up and over Mushkin putting Calgary back in front by two or three to one. I was going to say before the goal that looked for Calgary to put Lanny McDonald on the top of the face-off circle there as, he, as they did on the first goal and the rebound that Ken Nielsen scored exactly what they did and that's exactly what they want to do all times. It is McDonald from Schwenard and Richmond. Another power play opportunity cashed in by the Calgary Flames for a 3 1 lead. Al Poplinski brings it out of his own zone. Makasak setting up. Ducks it all. And it was taken off his stick of bouncing puck as he closed in on Mushkin. The Flames are flying right now with 7.06 to go. They lead it over the Soviets 3 1. And the NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Three power play goals have done the trick. Nielsen, Schwenard, McDonald, the last one for McDonald. From Schwenard and Bridgman, 12-24 of this, the second period. Petasar. Left for Poplinski. Rio trailing him. Can't get his stick on it. Krutov now. Long pass. Lorianov being bumped by Lavalle. Bill Russell, the Calgary captain, shoots it down to that Soviet corner again. Poplinski going in after it. Mariana. Or Kazatanov, and oh, he's way over the net with that shot. Into the crowd. Well, speaking of fellows that can shoot, this fellow, Kevin Lavalle, right there, has got one of the hardest shots in the league, hasn't he, Wayne? Well, there's two people on the Calgary team that we don't want to let them shoot the puck, and that's Lane McDonald, of course, and Kevin Lavalle is the other person. He gets in just at the top of those circles, and he knows where it's going all the time. By the way, he doesn't weigh 102 pounds. <laughs> Maybe that's kilos. If he did, he'd be next door for the races this afternoon. <laughs> well, that's harness racing, isn't it? 82 is the correct weight for him. Semenov gets it back to Pervukin. Lanny McDonald, he's played a whale of a game for Calgary, but can't clear just now. Now gets a second chance, beating Schwenard. Schwenard chasing it down the ice, can't get there in time. Calgary has called for icing with 6.16 left in period two. Well, Lanny almost had Schwenard away, and Schwenard's got great speed and a fine shot. He just missed that pass, he'd have been down alone. But things are going well for this fellow right now, Schwenard. He's made a couple of fine plays, he scored a goal, set up another goal, playing well on that line. And one thing about these shooters that are scoring like McDonald, Wayne, you feel it's going to go in the net when you're scoring goals. McDonald must feel everything he shoots is going to go in. Well, he's got it going very well right now, and, and you know, it can't happen to a nicer person. Lanny's a tremendous man off the ice and on the ice, and he has things going his way right now, and he's going to score a few more goals before it's over. Hamanoff won the draw on a rolling puck, had to be popped off quickly by Don Edwards. 6-12 to go now in the second period. Calgary got the lead of the first Nielsen's goal. They have outscored the Soviets 2-1. Bernard and McDonald are applied for the USSR. Larry Young off, and all goals tonight have come on power play. That man right there had an excellent power play at the University of Wisconsin, the top power play in college. He's a very wise coach when it comes to power plays also. Semenov beaten by Bridgman on that faceoff. Bourgeois starts at left side Calgary. It is shot down the ice inadvertently, hopped over a stick. But again, they'll call icing against the Flames with 5.59 as the pace slows appreciably here late in the second period. We had a great deal of success against the Soviets winning our hockey game 4-3. to three. The thing that we wanted to stress most before the hockey game is that it was never late to, too late to come back to pick up a man. And if you watch the Soviets, it doesn't matter if they're going at top speed or half speed or just gliding over the blue line. They're always looking for a person to drop the puck to, and they're very successful in that. Indeed they are, Wayne Gretzky. Semenov. Won the draw, slap shot is blocked. Here's Reinhardt now trying to lead the pass up to Heinbar. 
hopped over a Soviet stick. No icing on the play. It's waved for Vukin to Svetlov. Getting it out now for Semenov. Einmars watching him. Svetlov takes it inside. He goes upside down over Richmond. Left point for Vukin. His shot deflected, but blocked by Edwards, and Heinmars will backhand it out of harm's way. Five minutes and 20 seconds left in the second period. Three to one, Calgary leading the Soviet Union. Offside is called at the Soviet blue line. And what a hit a moment ago we saw, Lou Nanny. That's right, and one thing that this game is getting, we're getting a lot of contact, and you know one thing, the Russians are getting a little frustrated. Calgary checking very well, staying right with the man. <laughs> And I'll tell you, they're getting caught in some instances that you haven't seen him hit like that before. Calgary's seen right on top of those people. That lob, up, up, and away. Benesov. For Starikov. Drops it to Vasiliev. He fell over the blue line. Now Nielsen. They'll be caught here, delayed offside. They now do whistle down. 4.58 to play in the second period. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Calgary ahead, 3-1. Want to remind you in the Neil Simon comedy, The Cheap Detective. Monday night, CTV movie on January 3rd, tomorrow night. Right now, we've got ourselves a great hockey game here. The fourth of six Soviets in NHL. The Calgary Flames playing extremely well here on home ice to Stampede Corral, leading by two. Vasiliev passed it back out. Benesov's shot is wide. Russell is sitting on top of the Soviet player. Finally lets him up behind the goal. That is Vasiliev. Lavalley on the left boards. Starikov takes a run at him. Vasiliev lets the shot go back. Here comes Nielsen. One man to beat Benesov with Lavalley, and he couldn't get the pass to him. For Rio, he can't deliver a pass to him either. But it's still inside the Soviet zone for Lavalley. Kevin Lavalley fades off of the boards and is bumped by Vasiliev and finally forced out to center by the Soviets. Just over four minutes to play in the second period. And both teams changing on the fly. Jackson against the boards. They'll hold it there for a face-off. Well, Kent Nielsen's a fellow that's got an outstanding shot. When he broke down that two-on-one, he should be taking that shot rather than looking for the good play. You look at a very tired Phil Russell, and boy, is he playing a tough game down in front of that Calgary net. He's making sure that goaltender Don Edwards is able to see everything. Here's Bourgeois having it hop over his stick. He's got to chase it down the board. Rattles it high off the glass, but it's still in the Calgary zone. Bourgeois again will clear it this time. Three minutes and 40 seconds left now. Jackson hit hard by Vozikov. Shalimov with it. Kapustin and Shepelev trailing. Kapustin, the pass back to Shalimov, didn't get there. Bourgeois coming up with it. Sending Kapustin away in center right. Hits the Soviet blue line, the left wing pass. Broken up. Kapustin for Shepelev. Shalimov steers it in front, back to Shepelev. For Kapustin, look out! Great save by Edwards, cleared off by Kapustin. Hailed in by Babinov. Then Bourgeois puts a bear hug on the Soviet player, and they freeze it for a face-off with 258 left. Wayne, what could that uh, Kapustin have done? Edwards standing right there all alone after he gets the pass from Shepelev and Edwards just beat him. Well, we see something a little bit different than what we have in our hockey. You see Kapustin, who had the puck on his backhand, and normally the NHL guys will get a little bit excited in front of the net and take the backhand, but he took his time and waited patiently and tried to wheel around and make a move on Edwards, which is very different from our hockey. And, uh, I don't know what he could have did there, either take the backhand or do what he, what he, what happened, but I think most guys would have just turned and fired it. Just a fine play by Edwards. He's standing up very well. And play, he plays his angles tremendously, and he's having a lot of success tonight. The only time they have beaten him, he was down as he came out to meet the play and out of position, and Larianov rolled it in so slowly off the inside of the post. It is 3-1 for Calgary. Bernard digs it free for McDonald. McDonald against Kazatanov digs it right out in front. They couldn't relay it. 
Betisov. Krutov. Ahead for Timonev. Timonev drags it in to the far side. Picked up there. Not cleared by Calgary. Conroy left it in there. This time he gets it out over the blue line to Lanny McDonald. Betisov closing off McDonald. Lanny carries right on. Big, strong McDonald has the puck. Only one hand on it there. Finally gives it up to Fedosov, who sends Kutov away. Larionov shot from an angle blocked by Edwards. White point for Kazatana. Now Reinhardt for Calgary. Russell. Russell having difficulty. Finally, McDonald against two Soviets. He's tired. They'll change. Just dumps it inside the Soviet zone. One thirty-seven to play in the second period. Three-one Calgary leading. And now the aggressive Calgary Flames are beating the Soviets with a puck on many occasions. Here's Hislop getting it. Setlov is tied up. Not cleared. And a lot of shot is blocked by the sliding Soviet player. Now Semenov, long right wing pass. Inside the line they go. Stick check. Richman has it now for Calgary. El Aranta. One minute to play in the second period. Down behind the Soviet net by Bridgman. Lanes changing. For Vukin. Sportsov. Couldn't get around the valley. The valley then falling on the play. Sportsov pops it back into the Calgary zone with 39 seconds to go. Forced out by Hislop, doing a good job of two-way checking for the Calgary Flame. Edwards gloving it, leaving it for Dunn. Svetlov, Vilyaliptinov, kept it in there. Semenov, 15 seconds to go on the period, cleared by Calgary. The Valley shoots it down the eye. Both teams changing again to the final five seconds of action here. Here's Pervukin. Resimov's shot is wide at the siren to end the second period. And the Calgary Flames emerge with a two-goal lead. And this hometown crowd here in the Stampede Corral loves it. 40 minutes of the fourth game of the NHL Soviet Series. And the NHL's Calgary Flames a period away from tying it up. As they lead the Soviet Union by a score of 3-1. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. He might have two hot goalies going tonight. No change at the Soviet goal. Mushkin, the starter, remains there. Trechak getting a rest. Kazatana. As period three is underway with Calgary leading the Soviets 3 to 1. And expects some third period pressure and a lot of it from the Soviets. Here's Krutov. Timonev shot block. McDonald and Spinard got it to the blue line. Now finally brought out by Spinard to center right with Riseborough. Drops it for Riseborough. His pass was blocked by Timonev, that he got pulled over by Randy McDonald. Play goes right out of the corner. Orianov behind a Soviet goal. Timonev gloves it down at center ice. Then falls. And Aranta being watched by Kutov. Taken off the puck for the Soviet. Betisov coming up with it. Passed blindly back out there. And the Soviet player, Kazatanov, wins it. And off the skate to a corner. Betisov. Giving it up to Schwedar. Pass too far for Riseborough. Timonev. Marianov shot blocked by Levin in his first test. The hands of Soviet shooters early in this third period. A little over a minute gone. Russell back to center ice. Bozakov. Delayed offside. It's called now as it's touched by Timonev. Well, Lemon looked very sharp on that save. He had to get that leg out quickly. A good shot, and Lemelin made a good save. That's the way you want to come in. You want to get tested right away, and you want to come up with a save. A fine shot by Leary off right there, down low, but Lemelin quick, gets the leg out. A little rebound, but it was clear. 
I don't think it matters what hockey team it is. Uh, every team, you always have a key player or key two players are, are going to spark you. And I think the line of Larinev and uh, Kutov are going to have to get the Soviets going. People like Riceboro and Lionel McDonald and are going to have to check that line and keep them intact. Any early leaders of the balloting gentlemen for the Labatt's players of the game? Well, I like that Vasilyov, number six. He's played uh, an outstanding game and been a threat every time he's been out there. And the work of McDonald certainly oh, commands attention for <laughs> the, Calgary the Calgary players. Team. We'll have those awards for you, the Labatt Player of the Game Awards, as soon as it's over. But a lot of good hockey still to come here tonight from the Stampede Corral. This is Pierre Rio leading it in the corner down there. Nielsen pouncing on the puck for the Calgary Flames. Back to Rio in behind the goal. And it's slapped up by Lavalle into the crowd. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. There's the story of the second period. The Calgary third goal has gone to Bridgman, as we suspected. Spinard gets the assist. 12-24 is the tie. That is the second, second goal. Calgary The goal. one we thought he deflected in front Tipped of the net. right. And they freeze it for a face-off in the Soviet zone. So your goal scorers tonight, Nielsen, Bridgman, Spinard for Calgary. Larianov for the Soviet Union. No, no, it would be Nielsen, Bridgman, McDonald. McDonald definitely got the third goal. McDonald, that's right. Out come the Soviets with Baikov. Yarosimov falls. Kazatanov carries on. Gives the puck up to Bourgeois. Now for the Soviets. Short side, a quick shot. Handled by Lemonin from Baikov. Starikov. Bourgeois getting it over for Hislop. He didn't clear. Baikov's long shot. Lemonin under fire here, getting warmed in a hurry here. Baikov fanned on it. Lifted high into the right corner. Vasiliev is tied up in there by Dunn. Yurosimov carrying off. Calgary having trouble clearing. Finally get the puck out to center eye. Baikov, three minutes into this third period. Still a two-goal Calgary lead at 3-1. Kazatana. Checked by Hesler. Now for Mokasak. He is bumped by Starikov. Play a little loose now in the center ice area. Set ahead to Bridgman. Wins it. Momentarily tied up with the Soviet player Schwarzow. And they battle back and forth in between the two blue lines. Russell now shooting it in for Calgary. Ilya Leptinov goes in behind his own goal. Prostostarica. Svetlov had it checked away by Mokasak. Valuable time being killed off by Calgary here. They line up to meet the Soviets at the blue line. The Soviets shooting it in. Russell left it there for Pervukin. Soviet shoots them almost anywhere on the ice. Two long drives blocked by Pervukin. And Aranta. Penalty here. Okasak running down the Soviet player set it off from behind. So the Soviet power play will come on. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. In the lower left-hand corner, you'll see Mokasak coming over, and this is a penalty you don't want to take. He jumped up and he grabbed the Soviet player down. You don't want to get the Soviets on the power play when you're trailing by two goals and a holding penalty like that. I'm sure their eyes are going to light up. They'll be a little excited now. Reinhardt. Marianov watching him, but he shoots it down the ice. Sheer strength of Reinhardt got that puck free. Lariana beating Timonev, the Soviet power play, hitting the Calgary blue line. Lariana behind the goal, trying to pass it out, had it blocked in there. But that's the Fedosov way down there in the corner. Can't keep it there. Calgary clears again. Some interference by Timonev there, and that's why the crowd was cheering. They were right. He really grabbed the Calgary player down. 
Wasn't called. Has a timeout. Dropping it back. Krutoff's pass into the corner. Loriana up against Russell. Russell gets there first. Relayed back out to center right and here come the play. Ghost could have rolled too far ahead for him, and Kazatanov covers up. Betty Song. Right wing for Krutov. Blazing in. Krutov scores! It's 3-2. Krutov in full flight, getting that pass, a long pass, lead pass out of his own zone. Going with some speed around the outside from Russell, and fortunately for him, a left-hand shot on the right side, able to make the wide deke across the front. Lemlin right here reaching for it, not quick enough. A good move by Kuta. Well, exactly what we talked about, taking unnecessary penalties, and what happens when you take a penalty and Kuta goes down the right side and outskates Russell. And, uh, maybe Lemlin might have challenged him a little bit more, uh, but Kuta, being a strong skater that he is, made a nice move and put the puck in the net. Well, that keeps it consistent, way in every goal tonight, a power play. This from Kuta, from Fedosov, and Kazatonov. 5-21, Soviets are down by a goal. Dalimov now shooting, and Lemelin handles that off the pad. Spinar getting it across. Lanny McDonald shooting, and Pushkin has it. Lanny's been skating very well and almost put another one in the net there. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. McDonald also oh dangerous as he was again right here. But this drive goal from the right side, top of the circle. Mushkin made contact, then he said, where's the puck? Finally found it. 3-2, 14, 16 left. Riseborough will take the draw for Calgary. And they'll banish him. Along with a Soviet player, they'll send in Schwinar and Shalino. And this is what you don't want to do. Reisberg's a left-hand shot, and he can draw into the slot area. Now with Schwinar there, he's going to have to pull it back to the right side. Not nearly as dangerous. But he doesn't. Gets it back of the point. A swap shot. Blocked in front. Pushed it down to hang on. A good shot by Reinhardt down low. And a fine play by Reisberg off the faceoff. Schwinar winning it to the right. He just deflected it right back to Reinhardt. Reinhardt got it away quickly. Here's the move by Riseborough. Screen the goaltender. Down low, Michigan makes the save. A good sign, gentlemen. The Flames not bothered all that much for the Soviet goal. They go right back to apply pressure. That's what you've got to do in a situation like that. Soviet, you bring it up the ice now. Edmonton visibly sagged when the Soviets came back to tie it at two, but then they got going. Pulled ahead to a 4-3 win in the opening game. Babadoff now back inside his own blue line. Bernard watching him in the corner. This is Kapustin out to Starikov. Leaves it there for Shepelev. Shepelev. Tackled by Conroy. The puck comes down the ice to the Soviet zone. Calgary changing on the move. Lavalle trying to set up a long pass to Nielsen. Couldn't get it to him. Long bouncing puck in on Lemelin. Clutch up by Oh, the Siliev right there. Couldn't control the bouncing puck. The Siliev, one of the outstanding Soviet players, digs it in front, and Lemelin hangs on. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in just a moment. Mikhail Vasilyov, one of the real dangerous Russian forwards around the net, trying to backhand that puck on the short side. Lemelin saving it and making the save right there after the Russian defenseman rushed in. The faceoff comes to the outside of the blue line. Bridgman winning the draw across to Hislop. Darikov had to hurry to get there in time. Now Baikov sweeps away at the puck and gets it inside the Calgary line. Edisov. Flame playing excellent coverage here against the Soviets. Shot in across the blue line. Over two lines. It was touched by a Soviet player. Face off at center. There's an offensive defenseman, Wayne Carey Alorenta from Finland, who's played very well this year for Calgary. Well, we know a lot about him playing with Yerry Curry, my right winger, being from Finland also. We know that he's got a dangerous shot back to the point. We don't let him wind up with it too often. Fifty-two to play, three-two. Calgary holding a lead over the Soviet Union. 
Flames have been ahead all night. Vasilyev. Darikov's long shot deflected wide. Reinhardt. Vasilyev is everywhere on top of him. Soviets keeping it in. Darikov shooting it down for Vasilyev. Gerasimov with it now. Rykov shooting blocked by the defense player Reinhardt. And out comes Paplinski trying to feed it ahead for Jackson. Vasiliev again for the Soviets. Put by Paplinski. No penalty call. Referee Brian Lewis right there. Works off, knocked off the puck by Mokasak. Now works off again, but it's offside. Vasiliev in ahead of the play. This might be the most times I've ever seen uh, Russians go offside. Well, they're very disciplined and not going offside very often. And tonight they seem to be a little bit off their game. They're going offside a little bit more than usual. And you can tell they're frustrated because Tikhanov is yelling at Brian Lewis, but Vasiliev really was uh, not uh, penalized in any way. He was taken out cleanly. And Reinhardt made, a, made his play Lou a moment ago there as he came out to block that shot. Soviet putting on pressure. Here is Bykov winding. Blasting it, and there's the job that Reinhardt did. And I'll tell you what else has just happened. I think we're going to get a bench penalty here on the Russians for yelling at Brian Lewis. I think he got a 10 minute misconduct. Right? Brian understands a little bit of Russian, yeah. does he? He's going to get a misconduct. <laughs> Someone's getting a misconduct. Either that or must be an interpreter down there telling Brian what they're saying. Probably by a gesture. Usually they can't speak English. I think the tone of voice would have a lot to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> they knew they weren't wishing him Happy New Year. Well, there's some discussion, as you can see, down at the Soviet bench. They want to seem perplexed. I'm sure they know very well what has happened. The Soviets, you could tell, are frustrated. They're getting far ahead of the play. They're going offside more than they ever did. Their passing is being taken away from them somewhat by the fierce checking of Calvary. Oh. Indeed, the captain, Fedosov, He's skating over now to talk at the bench with the uh, interpreter, the Air Canada representative, Aggie Kuklowitz, but indeed a 10-minute misconduct has been handed out against the Soviet Union. But I think Mr. Lewis really did miss one here, and that's what the Soviets are all upset about. Well, that's a bit of a dive. Poplinski, if he was really going to put him down, usually I, I'd see him miss him, but right there at this stage of the game, Poplinski, when he's going to take you down hard, he does it a bit forcefully. Right there, he did have a stick in a way. Jammed it in. But what you do, if you're caught in a position like that, if you're a player, you go up and take a, uh, a few, take it a little extra. But that really did uh, cause a misconduct because the Soviets got somewhat frustrated. It was a borderline call. It could be called. I don't think at this stage of the game a referee is going to call that kind of thing because it is a little questionable. Look and see if there's force, if we can see it again off of Plinsky. Is there much force? No. Not a you great can tell deal. by the looseness of the lower hand that he's really not taking him out. When you take a guy out and down, you draw the bottom hand back, and that's what he did not do there. And uh, I think Brian Lewis is right in not calling that. Uh, I know it frustrated him, but here's the big help. Fedosov going off for 10-minute misconduct. Well, at least he's going over to talk to Aggie Kuklowitz. I'm not sure it is Fedosov, the captain. I don't think it's Fedosov. I think I think it's just a bench uh, misconduct or the coach has the misconduct, but Fedosov's over there with Mr. Kuklovitz trying to straighten everything up. Well, if, if they just give it to no one in particular, that's not going to affect the Russians at all because they've got some guys <laughs> who play very little, and they'll just send over anyway. They have a football team dressed yeah. tonight. Too bad Maltsev's got back to Moscow. They'd bring him out of the stands and sit him in there if they could. In fact, they might help him. They get more room on the bench. They'll change <laughs> through. They, they are. They are having a lot of problems with that bench down there. It's two levels high, and they, I, I believe they have 22 players dressed, so they're finding it a little bit difficult. What do you think tonight they have? Well, maybe they'll have Aggie serve it. Aggie's already over there. <laughs> He's working with them. They'll say, "Why don't you serve?" Well, they, they like to play a lot of games with your minds, like I said before. And right. I think what's happening here is he knows he's got the penalty, and he's just going to let it delay as long as possible to give his players a rest. Then you see Kutov come out a little bit more, Fedosov, and he can play his older players a lot more. Well, I think that uh, if anybody's getting their minds played with, it's the Russians, because Calgary's playing much better than the Russians thought. Calgary playing a very good game tonight, and this fella, you know, really uh, Gumayev going in there and serve it. He hasn't had a shift in two periods. It's not going to affect it's the Russians. Yeah, it's not going to bother him at all in their offensive or defensive play. So right. 
Sergei Gamayev nominated by Tikhanov to spend 10 minutes in the Stampede Corral penalty box. Gamayev probably happy. He's over there with a lot of room to move when he hasn't been getting any ice time anyway. And he won't be alone. He's got Aggie Kuklowitz to talk to. Very impressed with Calgary keeping their composure, not taking stupid penalties. Right. Well, Molkasax was one that he shouldn't have taken, but for the most part, they're checking cleanly, hard but clean, and they're really frustrating the Russians. A very good job by Calgary. Really, three of the four NHL teams have handled themselves very well. Quebec did some very stupid things. Extremely disappointing. Oilers, man. Canadians, now Flames have played it perfectly. Keep their wits about them, but you have to do against the Soviets. To win the face-off and shoot it into Dunn. Teams even. Soviets have a misconduct being served by Gamayev. Whistle down. There'll be a face-off. The left of Lemelin, who came in to relieve the sparkling Don Edwards after two periods. Well, and Lemelin being tested early has got him right in the game. I think he feels pretty confident right now. He had been playing extremely well, you know, for Calgary up until uh, the last game against Philadelphia. Semenov won the faceoff. It's over on the far side for Bourgeois, and he hops it out to center ice. Semenov right back on top of the play. <laughs> Down goes Petlov. Puck rolling in for Perbukin. Lanny McDonald shoots from way over there on the right boards wide. Semenov. Did you let off got turned around for a moment? Now has it on Perbukin's stick. In watch by Spinar to McDonald and quickly for Buka to take it away from Lanny McDonald. Bouncing in on Lemelin. Done against Sportsov. Soviet win it right out in front. Bourgeois steers it in behind. Now McDonald long pass it out of offside. Oh, to the length of it. Spinar is sticking it on goal. And not by much. Maybe a step. I think he was offside. Close, but indeed the call was a good one. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. McDonald with a long lead pass. Schwinnard, one stride over the red line. Offside, Jimmy Christensen called it, and it was offside. A very close, close play because Schwinnard would have been gone. I think the Russians are as human as everybody else, and you get this late stage of the hockey game with 10 minutes left, 3-2, they're going to open it up a little bit more. Soviet scored the winning goal of the 1967 World Championships in Vienna that way. It was ruled onside, but it was a similar play to that. Now Krutov right in front of his own goal. Left it there, the valley last one deflected high. And Aranta keeping it in for the flame. Edison. Simonev, defender goes down. Now Aranta. Out in front, bouncing puck. Eloranda feeds it in behind the goal again. Ryu relaying it down the ice. Icing his way. Marianov to Kazutana. The Valley. Islip. The Valley shot. Put Frank Green blocked in there by Michigan and the Soviet defenders. We are now past the midway mark of the final period. Nine minutes and 53 seconds left. Calgary on top 3-2. Lavalle for Hislop. Kazatanov stick checks him. Rutov coming away at the Calgary line. Drops it there. Mariana trying to feed the man down the left circle when it goes by. Russell a punching check on Rutov and it comes back to center ice. Jeffy Lev. Trying to feed Shalimov. Shalimov getting over there now against Bridgman. Held in by Fedosov off the skate. Back to center right. Goes the top. He lost it. Pass goes the top again. Fedosov had it hop over his stick. Bridgman for the Calgary Flames. Nine minutes to play in the game. Slap shot blocked in front by Vosikov from Conroy's stick. Delimo. Four defenders back there. Bridgman, the lead man, has the puck. Jackson on the right side. Carries on to the corner. Digs it out. Nobody there to pass to. Delimo. 
non-stop action now as the puck bounces free for Koplinski at center ice and he jams it inside the blue line. Pass for Kapustin failed to click. Now Shalimov blasts one, Lemelin turns that aside. Only a player with his stick in Jackson's ribs. Here comes Calgary. Past the blue line, a soft rolling pass. Mokasak couldn't get a good shot away. Baikov centering it. Lane's a little disorganized now. Finally get it out of there. Less than eight minutes to play. Puck is left there. A race for it. Pushkin comes out to clear to the blue line. Baikov turned around by McDonald. Gets it inside the line. Vasilya against Dunn, locking away at Dunn into the corner of the goal. They both go down. No penalty call. The action furious here for Mokasan. Rolling it inside the blue line for McDonald against three defenders. Starikov down to the Calgary corner. 7.22 remaining. Yerosimov passed it too far back to Starikov. Russians pressing down a goal at three to two. Calgary captain Russell against Semenov. Vidyaletinov takes over. Or for Vukin, long pass going nowhere. The stick of Russell. Lanny McDonald, long shift for him. Blast one wide. What's on? Vidyaletinov. Ahead, Provoca takes a check, but here is Schwartz up inside the line against Russell, falling on the play. Back from the Calgary play. Sustained action here. Russell shooting it down. Shot it from the wrong side of center. No icing on the play. Touched by Calgary and a lot of shot from Tremendous action. The Soviets coming back now. Three on two. The shot goes wide for number 15, Stutlock. Go high in the crowd. Finally, a whistle. 6 13 remaining to play. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Lay in the center ice area just underway as Timonov is taken away by Conroy and back to center ice it comes. Less than six minutes, 5.53 left now. Fedosov falling. Ryu. Firing it down to the corner. Kazatanov watching him. By the side of the goal. Calmly, Fedosov sends it ahead to Kutov. Timonev on his left. Kutov swings around the goal. Feeds it back for Fedosov. Closing in, he shoots it blocked. Nielsen lost his stick and is broken. Kicked down the ice as the plane chains on the play with 5.20 to play now. More sustained third period action. Mariana lost control. Bridgman, a race to the puck. Betty Soft gets there first. Bridgman hounding him. It's dug back to Kazatana. Then to Sheffield. Bridgman everywhere. Four checking the Soviet Union. Less than five minutes remaining. 3 2, Calgary leads. Shalimov coming in. Dunn riding him off. Passed it in front, nobody there on the plane, Babadoff. High Marsh, Babadoff got to it first. This is like the opening four minutes in Montreal, non-stop action. Jalimov, Sheffield, inside the line, Sheffield turned around, loose puck still free, Russell with it. Three on two for Calgary, Russell fakes the shot, focus like the pass, just rolling over the top of his stick. Arakov for the Soviet Union. Sergei Kapustin. He lost it there. Went down inside the blue line. Mokasak with it for Calgary. Kaplinski against Shalimov. Soviets getting fired now. The shift has been all along. Fine. He got two men here. Little pushing and shoving right in front of the Soviet bench. The NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment. Here 
Olivier with Lou Nanny and Wayne Gretzky back with you for the final three minutes and 55 seconds. Calgary Flames try to tie this series for the National Hockey League here in the Stampede Corral with a one-goal lead. Poplinski keeps the pressure on the Soviets. Darakov in the corner. Or Vasiliev has played an outstanding game but left it there beside his goalie, Mushkin. Now Poplinski watching him as Bykov comes away with it. Shooting it in. Gerasimov bumped off the puck. Round the other side, Conroy. Lucas out. Long pass, Jackson chasing after it for Luke and the speedy defenseman trying to cover pass in behind Poplinski. Now the Soviets come back as the end to end action continues. First check there, Gary Sabal knocked down. He's been injured or is down on the play. Maybe doing a little dramatic acting. He's finally now getting the one knee. Oh, I think he really got hit there. He got hit pretty well. The Calgary Flames are just checking relentlessly. Really impressive. They're not allowing the Russians to have any freedom to move. Well, I think what happened there, uh, not so much the body check itself, but I think he might have twisted his knee when he got caught in between the two players. Therefore, he had to get taken off the ice, but I think he'll be okay. Standing up at the blue line, this is Calgary coming right there. A good body check, good collision, a lot of work. Heinmarsh coming back, defensemen standing up. They're not allowing the Russians to come in the zone and free wheel at all right now. Three minutes, four seconds left. Skinner. Face off going to Fedosov inside the line. Off Larianov skate. Kutov tries to break quickly. Skinner has it for Calgary and dumps it back down to the Soviet corner. Two minutes and 48 seconds left now. Dimyanev. Lost out, Riseboro with it. Riseboro in the center ice area. Beats Spinar. His shot is wide. Big rebound for Riseboro. Can't get to it. Crouton against Dunn. Forcing it inside the line. They whistle it down. It's called on an offside just outside the blue line. Well, even Lanny McDonald, like every other forward, coming back, taking the body. McDonald, an all-around player. He works hard at all times. You see him come here, a real good check. McDonald is a fellow that makes you pay the price if you want to carry the puck by him. And at the same time, he's still got this great offensive skill. Well, the Soviets can relax tomorrow night. Thanks to Lou Nanny, they'll be at the door in Minneapolis watching the Dallas Cowboys and Minnesota Vikings Monday night football. We'll do anything we can to get their mind off the game the following night. Exactly. Then you got that tour planned, of course, for Tretiak <laughs> around Minnesota, try to convince him it's Montreal. Maybe make, make sure that it is. I told him already it is Montreal. We just changed the name of the city for him. Easy enough to do. Here's Kapusta now. Two minutes and seven seconds left. La Valley against Shefalev. Gets it over to Ryu. And he rolls it ahead outside the Calgary Blue Line. Less than two minutes remaining. Shalimov, Shefalev, Shefalev to Shalimov. Couldn't connect with him. Now Nielsen with Rio coming away. Left wing pass for La Valley. Stops against the board. Rio shot blocked by the Soviet goalie Mushkin. Kerbukin being checked by Nielsen. He's had all too few victories against the Soviet Union in his career. Would like one right here. As would everybody across the country tonight, and certainly here in the Stampede Corral. High stick gets hit down. 125 to go. We're getting down near the end of the hockey game. And very uncommon for the Soviets to pull the goaltender for a six attacker. It'd be interesting to see whether they do that here this evening. Well, they didn't do it against you in Edmonton. They didn't do it in the Olympics. One thing about the Soviets, we don't pay attention to it, but they pay attention to the score, and they can go back to what they lost before in every other game, and they always go by total goals. We look at the time left in this game. The great series won by Paul Henderson still is on a plaque in Luznicki Stadium, 32 goals, 31. The Soviets won that series, they said. Total goal. One minute, 10 seconds left as Timonev is inside the line in difficulty. Drops it for Loriano. Rutov throws again. Oh, he hit the post. Here's a rebound coming out now. Kazatanov gets a pass away. Reinhardt is hurt on the play. Getting up very slowly. That shot went right off the side of his head. Reinhardt now just reeling back again. He went out to block the shot, lost his balance. 
because you don't block a shot with your face forward. Lost his balance, came off right off the side of his head. One thing when you're blocking shots, especially at this stage of the game, if you get down by the hash marks towards the goal, you block on both knees. If you're going to block out by the blue line, as we look at that real close call, Krutov shot hitting the pipe, you block on one knee because if you block the shot, you can be up and get a breakaway. Here's Krutov going around the far side. He got a good angle because his left hand shot, but he hit the pipe, and as that puck came out to the blue line, Reinhardt making a good block of it. Puck, but he blocked it with his hand, I believe. He's a little stunned. Look at this. Now watch his head come forward. You see the shot right there? Right there off the helmet. But uh, I think, fortunately, the helmet took the blunt of the blow. He's a little, little dazed, and he played a fine game, as did all of Calgary's defense tonight. Game. Any young player in doubt about wearing a helmet? There's a good reminder right there. They do come in handy. They're always, they're always nice. You see, here's another angle, Kazatonov shot, maybe off the stick, that's right, it did, and off to the helmet. Just tip the stick a little bit, it's very unfortunate, an exhibition game like this, you don't want to lose any of your key hockey players, Paul's a very big part of that hockey club. Well, exhibition is only a word, when these two uh, countries play, there's no such thing as exhibition. I was going to say, this is some exhibition, isn't it? The intensity, the emotion here in the final 48 seconds, Lemelin hanging on. Did you see that, it hit Lemelin in the mask, he sort of reached for it, it was fluttering, it hit him in the mask, went down, and he covered up on it. So he's put a little pressure. Right now, Calgary's got to keep the puck ahead. Just get it out of the zone and try and put some pressure on so they can't get in. What a tremendous game the Calgary Flames have played against the national team of the Soviet Union. 46 seconds, the time remaining as we keep our eye on that. Kazatanov has his drive blocked. Russell in the corner can't clear. Krutov lost it. Pass wise for a stick. Larianov shot it to the castle. Turn off. Let's go to save by Lemelin. A good save. Maybe a game saver. 30 seconds to go. Fedosov can't control it. Rise throws up end and it goes inside the Soviet blue line. Calgary determined to hang out and win this. McDonald is everywhere. 15 seconds to go. One last attack here for the Soviet Union. But McDonald feels the puck. Landed it Donald against Kazatana. Takes it down to the corner. Three seconds to go now. That is going to do it for Calgary play. They stopped the, the clock, clock for some stopped. reason. They stopped the clock. There'll be a face-off round for two seconds to go. That's right, Don. You know, the crowd was just exuberant here tonight. No one could hear the crowd was yelling so, so much. No one could hear the Calgary team jump on the ice, and the whistle hadn't blown yet. Lanny McDonald playing an outstanding game, very wisely keeping the puck, controlling it along the boards, not allowing it to be frozen. I think Brian Lewis called a penalty, and that stopped the clock. I don't think it was a whistle, they just stopped the clock on attention. That is it, it is all over. The clock's down to 0 0. Lane's mobbing Lemelin, who will share this victory with Don Edwards, who played the first two periods. The Soviet captain, Fedosov, inquiring about the mix up on time. And some outstanding play by the Calgary defense also. Phil Russell, just a yeoman job back there, working extremely hard. All of the defensemen playing well. Mel Bridgman up on the left side, checked extremely well, never giving that puck away. But this man right here, Lanny McDonald, played as well as any of it. Well, he's got my vote as the last player of the game. We'll see how it turns out. Soviets now appear satisfied. The time has expired. And indeed, they are going to roll out the red carpet. Wayne, what did, those presentations. what did you think about the checking job Calgary did tonight? Well, I think what happened was, we, like I said, we had the Larinov line against uh, McDonald line. Do Dougie Riseborough did a tremendous job helping out. They did a fine job checking. All right, Wayne, the NHL Soviet Series 83 will continue in a moment.